Our adventure here is coming to an end. With only 100 days left in the massive world of Mega Modded, it's time to wrap up this series with a bang. That being said, if you haven't seen the first 400 days, then you've got some catching up to do. Otherwise, you may be very confused. Like the video and subscribe to the channel if you do end up enjoying the video. And without further ado, let's just get right into it. Day 401 is the beginning of the end. Sorry, that, that was a bit moody. But we've got a lot to do over the next 100 days, so there's no time for formalities. Well, actually, it had been a while since I was last here, so I had to take some time reacquainting myself with the farm and all of the mods again. But it didn't take long to find the flow, and it all started with the harvest on Ginger Island. It seems I had left myself an island full of wonderful flowers and fruits. So thanks, past Poxiel. I had to detour back back home in order to make more room in my backpack, and then it was back to the island farm for the rest. After I had sorted the rest of my produce into the kitchen, I walked out to Calico Desert. Here I popped into Sandy's to buy some fairy duster seeds, and foraged for some coconuts and cactus fruit. Although when I was planting the seeds later that evening, I had a thought. I've planted these before, haven't I? Alas, it's never a bad idea, I guess. Just in case. Back on the farm, I used those fairy rose flowers I had harvested earlier for more fairy dust and wrapped up my final first day. Which means it must be on to day 402. To my utter shock, when checking Key's quest for the week, I was astounded to see Key's cuisine. <gasps> This man is pulling my leg, right? That didn't stop me from taking it though. Hey, key gems are key gems. Afterwards, I headed to Ridgeside to start the gift giving grind. I'm gonna warn you now, there will be a lot of gift giving in this video, so buckle in for a new segment I'd like to coin, presents with Poxiel. It's less energetic than panning with Poxiel because unlike gift giving, I actually enjoy panning for lucky rings. That afternoon, I paid a quick visit to the saloon and ended up paying for Claire's salad because it's just in my nature. I was here for coffee and lots of it to turn into triple shot espressos back home and ship off the Keys Cuisine quest. And for recognition of my hard work, I did keep some for myself as I gave myself employee of the month. <laughs> With that taken care of, I was craving a little extra gold. I know I've torn down the Ginger Island ancient fruit crop, but I still have the greenhouse and grandpa's shed still full of it. So I dumped them into kegs, because why not? As night came, I stumbled across an unfinished harvest by my Junimos. And let's just say if they weren't getting paid before, they certainly won't be now. Anyway, moving right along to day 403. It took a minute to figure out how to start my day today, but eventually I made it all the way up to Robin's to buy a stack of wood from her to use on a community upgrade for Penny and Pam. And with my good deed done for the day, I popped up to Ridgeside to get an idea of how much the Summit Farm house upgrade would be. It needs 500 hardwood. I have 41. Hopefully that should do it. I came across the hungry bear later on, just chilling at the edge of the Cindersap forest. The bear wanted a salmon, so I gave it a salmon. Then it wanted a wild plum, no worries. So I fulfilled its wishes and gave it a wild plum. It took a bit of figuring out to work out whatever this was, but I soon found it and made an ice cream brownie. Good to see a balance of healthy fruit and sweet treat, I guess. And then it asked for one more thing. And let me tell you, I could not work it out. Trust me, I do kick myself when I figure this out eventually. But for now, we're just gonna have to move on to day 404. It was the second day of presence with Poxiel. I should note that characters like Andrea, Geo, Kiwi, and Dyer, most of which became recently available for friendship after clearing the spirit realm, don't have a birthday. Meaning I'm just gonna have to give them gifts two times a week, every week, until they love me. Trust me, I'm a self-proclaimed love expert. Amongst the gift giving was June's birthday, who leaves after winter and doesn't come back until fall, meaning I'll have to get him to max hearts before then, or risk losing the opportunity for max friendship with everyone. Isn't that fun and totally not stressful at all? In better news, I managed to get my hands on one of the last crafting recipes. Some extra wonderful people left comments on the last video, saying the final recipes could be from the Badlands Outpost. And they were right on the money, so thank you to them. After crafting the Alexia, I ended the day by filling in the orchard extension with more trees, for the simple reason of, farm must look pretty. 
I paid Abigail a very early morning visit on day 405 to hand her a pumpkin for her birthday. Then it was off to the deep woods for the day. Yeah, remember when I tried it once ages ago and then that was kind of it, I never really brought it up again. Well, I finally remembered about it. <laughs> It was a nice change to be running through green forests rather than musty mines so I quite enjoyed my time running through the deep woods. At these lower levels there wasn't too much challenge with the monsters, but as I got deeper I tried to find any secrets or obscure items. But it seems all I could get my hands on were flowers, bug guts and lots of slime. Karma came and bit me right in the ass later that night though, turns out these putrid ghosts don't care about max health and well... There goes the end of that. After a near death experience and 4 hours of sleep I was looking never better on day 406. I put that energy into presents with Poxiel that morning. Amongst them was another birthday, Ian's actually. So I gave him an eggplant in bed. Just outside I got to read him a letter that he'd received back from his family and hearing about how his family, especially his sister, were really benefiting from the money that he was always sending them was truly heartwarming. We all need an Ian in our lives. Back down in the valley we also got to see Penny and Pam's new house thanks to Robin's community upgrade. Not looking too shabby if I say so myself. All I needed was to give June a gift but he was nowhere to be found. So instead I headed back to the farm to empty the mailbox where I found a letter for me from Rasmodius saying that he could manifest an obelisk to the deep woods for me, allowing me to explore further. I really hope that I don't forget about this really important information for the next couple of weeks. I started day 407 playing a game of hide and seek with the kids of the valley and while I was seeking I let Morgan win. They were having a bit of a hard time with Jazz calling them a boy so I thought I'd be kind but I explained to Jazz that Morgan just identifies themselves differently and Jazz and Vincent were pretty cool with it and still happy to play. So with another good daily deed done for the day I called into Key's walnut room and yes picked up Key's cuisine again. Are we surprised? I'm not. I made some poi in the kitchen back home to tick off another cooking recipe. I completed Key's quest by shipping off some more espressos and finished off another uncomplete harvest in the crop fields. But I guess that's what I get for employing volunteered work. I was gearing up for the prank of the century on day 408. It was the valley fair today and in my inventory I possessed a certain someone's pair of purple underwear. <laughs> I stuck it on my Grange display and let Lewis wander around to look at all the displays. Once it was all over, Lewis gave me a very generous 750 star tokens to take them away from the public view, which at the shop I spent on a fancy looking fedora. Back home I swapped out Dusty's propeller hat for the swanky new fedora, and from now on we'll be referring to my refined steed as Dusty the Detective. Gift giving is how I started day 409, and it didn't take too long to get all the gifts out to those who needed them, which meant I had time afterwards to collect up the ancient fruit wine I had been fermenting and dumping it into the shipping bin for some extra profit. I then ran into Andy at Aurora Vineyard nearby. He gave me a rundown on what happened to Jerry and Elizabeth, the original owners of the vineyard who went bankrupt in a recession. He didn't look too happy about it all so I thought it'd be best to give him some space. Coming back from the beach I dropped off Lewis's pants back to him, one of the lobsters I'd caught I gave to Gus for a quest and the other I put away safely back in the basement of the farmhouse. I also wanted to knock off another quest so I took a largemouth bass to Jody's for dinner and just slapped that bad boy right down on the floor. Not only am I three years late to dinner but your fish now tastes like the floor. I think it'd be best to move on to the next day. I found myself that morning at Marnie's giving her a cave carrot and... Ugh, right on the floor again. My daily good deed score has really taken a hit. Oh well, it was off to the desert to chop down some of the mahogany trees that had grown in hopes of getting enough hardwood for the summit farmhouse upgrade. I got a lot, but unfortunately not enough. However, from chopping stumps in the secret woods and cutting down mahogany trees on Ginger Island, I still didn't have enough. <gasps> but I was pretty close. In the meantime, I planted strawberries down on the island farm because silly me had run out, and they're a hot commodity for not only cooking, but gifts too. 
I had to give out a couple of gifts the morning of day 411. One to June, who I found hanging around Pekas, and one to Leo, who was now a part of the weekly Presence with Poxdeals segment. However, the afternoon had snuck up pretty quickly, so I used some of the time to chop trees and stumps for more hardwood. This time, when I checked to see my progress, I was happy to see that I had over 500 hardwood, which I used along with some stone, wood, and a bit of gold to commission the Summit Farm upgrade from Sean's Odd Jobs. This is embarrassing embarrassing to admit, but I spent the rest of the night once again trying to figure out what the hungry bear was asking for. Trust me, this is as painful to watch back as it was trying to figure this out. I added Scarlet to the weekly gift giving gang on day 412. The list gets much bigger, but let's just enjoy how small it is right now. I had high hopes going into the Ridgeside Gathering Festival today, hopes that the girl's stall would be selling a banana sapling for a cookie recipe I still needed to make. But they were instantly crushed when I saw a mango sapling and a certain lack of banana. So disappointed I had to watch the performance at the Starbound stage. But from an earlier storyline Alyssa was now singing at the gathering so that that's cool. My disappointment was quickly thrown out the window on day 413 because as I walked into the outpost this morning I was greeted by Alyssa, who was selling two marvellous looking crafting recipes. Of course I had a quick second to celebrate. Without a second thought I raced home to craft the two final items and with that I had achieved Craft Master, which ticks off another goal towards perfection and puts a rest to the immense stress I was feeling at the end of the last video about these bloody recipes. I'd argue it's pretty hard to follow that kind of success, so I took it down a notch and decided to spend the rest of the day up on the summit farm, clearing out this excess amount of debris. Not only because I have a brand new farmhouse being built, but because I have something to do with it. In the last video, I said the most liked comment would get to choose what happens with the Summit Farm. And Victoria had the most liked suggestion to turn it into a decorative garden. And you, my friend, are speaking my language. I woke up on day 414 to my new farmhouse. I gotta give it to him, Sean did a great job. The debris clearing continued this morning as I didn't quite manage to clear it all last night. This consumed most of my day, but by the afternoon it was looking like a beautiful blank canvas for a future garden space. While around Ridgeside, I came across Philip, who was receiving a comic book from the Log Cabin Hotel's mail service. I got to read it and look after it while he had an appointment to go to. Safe to say I'm a big Incredible Man fan now. A short while later, I came back and he'd fallen asleep reading it. Then Lenny came across us both sleeping. Uh, this sounds like the start of a great love story. But I'm married with two kids. I was still around because I was actually finishing the day giving out some more presents. Okay, then up at the ridge I got between Geo and Briel again, now these two have a history, but this time, Briel saved Geo from a monster attack. Then a very long story short, Geo came clean about the threat of Gabriella's minions taking over human political hosts, meaning that the assassinations Briel has been investigating has been by Geo and the Red Scarf clan, but they're doing it for a good reason. So then Briel is like, hey, that's actually good, let me help, and then Geo's all like, no doubt, sounds good man. That's totally word for word what they said, I swear. I'm also giving gifts to Claire now, just thought you'd want to know. Speaking of gifts, I began day 415 gift giving, who would have thought? There was also another birthday amongst the gifts today, I gave Maddie a piece of coral for her special day. But uh yeah, just lots of people happy to receive the same thing they got last week. I found myself up in the Ridge Mountains later that night picking more mist blooms for Dyer's presents, and I found the Falls of Love, which was a quest I had picked up from Geo's hut earlier. Day 416, I wasn't going to let the rain dampen my mood to decorate. So I arrived at the Summit Farmhouse with stone paths in hand and made a start laying out the main pathways through the garden. I quickly worked out where the main middle section would be, then ran a path from the southern entrance, this funky circular path from the farmhouse, and a path to the east side of the farm from the middle, then a little side path that led to the minecart. To add some detail, I swapped out some of the stone paths with crystal paths to add a cool green colour to them. I then added one more connecting path later that night and I was very happy with the progress we made today. 
But was I finished there? Of course not. The decorating bug had latched onto me like a crazy ex-girlfriend. So day 417 was spent back up at the summit farm, adding hardwood fences around the outside of the paths and putting torches on top of them for light, extending the path out to the nearby lake for any future peaceful fishing opportunities and filling in a small section of the garden with mushroom trees and surrounding it with grass. My plan is to have each section unique and different from the others. I'm not too sure what the other the sections will be just yet, but I'm sure it'll come to me in due time. The first thing I did on day 418 was give Corrine a birthday gift, and I enjoyed a cable car ride back down the hill with Dusty, because I had more presents to present some villagers with. I only had a few today, and afterwards I got to make a couple more cooking recipes back home in the kitchen. With that out of the way, it meant I had the day to spend decorating. I utilised the Adventurer's Guild ledger to pick up a fun few decorating things, so that I could light the garden with these wooden lamp posts and turn the front of my farmhouse into an outdoor storage area, which ended up turning out a lot better than I thought it would. My lava eels were demanding an iridium bar back on the farm, so I complied with their demands before heading to bed. I happened upon Corrine on the way to Geo's the following day. She was intrigued by his invite the last time they met. Except Geo got to the part where they were assassinating people who had been corrupted by evil spirits, and Corrine was not too stoked to hear about the whole killing people part. So understandably, she cut the conversation short. Hey, I was just trying to move my catalogues from the summer farm to do more decorating. I don't, I don't want to be part of this. Which I did. I added some birch benches to the middle of the garden and started on another section of the garden. This section, I thought would be for the usual trees you would find around the valley, but to add some flair I took the conventional indoor plants and placed them out here instead, all before adding the final ingredient, all of the grass. It was soon after this I finally remembered about the deep woods obelisk. You'd think I'd pay attention to my to-do list. Nonetheless I went to check how much it would cost. It costs 10 million gold. Holy good lord in heaven, what the fuck? I needed a plan, and I needed one fast. I sat on top of Detective Dusty and thought for a while. I even went to the Spirit Sea Festival, and while I was blundering around the maze, I was still thinking. But as I left the maze with my golden pumpkins that night, I was confident I had come up with a suitable plan. Day 420 blaze it was the final day of fall. I would try to make a better joke, but I had no time to muck around. First of all, I had to give Susan a gift for her birthday before setting my plan into action, which required buying a buttload of seeds from Sandy in the Oasis shop, then a buttload of deluxe speed growth from Piers. Straight after that, I was on my way to Ginger Island. I may not have ancient fruit anymore, but if I can do the same with star fruit, then I may just have a chance of making 10 million gold by the end of these last 100 days. So I I got to tearing it all down just to build it right back up again with starfruit. It took all day and I think even I was sweating a wee bit, but after a back breaking day I filled all but one section with starfruit, and before I knew it, it was winter. The usual frosty chill I wake up to isn't here this morning. It's quite nice to be in the tropics even though it's raining. The last section I missed last night was the first thing I took care of for day 421, and I was happy to see my island farm full of potential profit once again. I couldn't hold off from the snowscape back in the valley for much longer, so I headed back to dump an inventory full of produce into the shipping bin, and I dropped by the sewers to hand Krobus a birthday gift. Now here is where I overhauled the presents with Poxial segment, just like the fridges, you know I go big or I go home. I had a plan to get everyone to max hearts, and that meant a lot more gift giving, so you can imagine the rest of my day was spent doing just that. You can see as I'm looking at the relationships tab, you'll notice that some of the villagers I'm not giving gifts to every week. That's because they have birthdays coming up, but everyone else? Free game. My night doesn't finish there though, Corrine and I raced in to rescue Geo, who was looking in quite the pickle with some gnarly looking monsters, and Corrine took care of a corrupted human invaded by one of Gabriella's minions. So you can imagine she saw more eye to eye with Geo and accepted the opportunity to join their cause. And then I had to cover for Daya over at Pika's, saying that she was just a travelling researcher to everyone else. But we know the truth. 
Aside from corrupting humans and lying for the sake of hiding true identities, day 422 was about the same as yesterday. A lot of today was lost to more gift giving, not to mention Jarek's birthday. I came across him on the hike trail where he admitted defeat to our farm competition, but then I pushed him to be better and the bet was back on apparently. And then it was back to the same old thing. We did manage to convince Leo to move to the mainland, so that was cool. I walked outside on day 423 and noticed the green snow was back. I thought the doctor gave me a pill for that. Anywho, I received the recipe for and cooked up a mixed berry pie to start my day, before handing June an apple since I missed him out yesterday, and hitting the volcano dungeon for the day to find dragon teeth. In spite of the girl's stall not selling a banana sapling at the ridgeside gathering, I would have to find my own dragon teeth to buy one from the island trader. Lucky for me I got my hands on enough and used them to get a sampling, which I took back home to cook a tropical fruit salad. It's a salad, why does it need a sapling? Shouldn't it just need like a normal banana? Well, I can't argue with culinary greatness. All I can do is purchase another recipe from Krobus and cook up a fresh void delight. I'm sure that won't give me gastro problems, right? I used the help wanted board for the first time on day 424. I'll tell you what, it took me long enough. I can finally showcase the mod that adds multiple help wanted quests to the board. And so I dropped off a cherry to Olivia, a dragon fruit to Elliot, and an apple to June. Which actually put June to full hearts, so I was happy to tick him off the list before he leaves at the end of the season. Additional gift giving followed suit that afternoon. I furthered my list of villagers to give presents to. What joy. Just before bed that night, I caught Blair sitting in the lounge staring at a blank TV. At least let me put on something worth watching. That's right my wonderful people, today we find ourselves back f It was time to work on another section of the Summit Farm decorative garden for day 425. This time I took over the large section on the right side and had a great idea to use it for an orchard. I mapped out the layout, slowly adding markers for the trees and wooden paths in between, adjusting the layout slightly as I went. Once I was happy with it, I circled down to Pierre's in the valley just before he closed to purchase a few trees to test out the spacing. And let me tell you, your boy nailed it. I'm also keeping them together by season, like spring, summer, fall and winter trees so they'll look aesthetically pleasing. As it should be. Continuing those orchard efforts on today 426, I paid Kim Poy a visit at Nightingale Orchard to purchase a few more trees for our summit farm. It wasn't quite enough to fill it out so I had to buy the rest from Piers. Then I had to plant them all so I spent a bit of time putting them all into their spots. Now we just have to wait a month for them to all grow so I can decorate it. A quick side note, earlier in the day I saw Shane followed by his chicken and I thought it was the most wholesome thing ever. Aww. I watched Malaya and Kim Poy walk into the void the following day. What have I just witnessed? Well, I guess we know why I can't find certain villagers on certain days. Maybe it's because their pathing gets messed up with the market day. Either way, I spent the whole day gift giving, but I was feeling very confused at the same time. I may not look like I'm doing much here on day 428, but I have just stumbled across the best wiki page ever. I could have never figured out all of these machines on my own, but this page just gave me all of the possible answers. Granted, some didn't work, but I think that's excusable due to its usefulness. So with this page in my hands, I got to make different types of yogurt with the yogurt jar, I smoked fish with the smoker, and made peach snaps with the infuser. This wiki page may have just been my saving grace. The machines were swapped out for good old fashioned hard work on day 429. My star fruit was ready for its first round of harvest. And yes, I may have harvested a bit prematurely, but I don't want to talk about it. Unlike ancient fruit, I cannot be a lazy farmer and just wait around for them to grow again. I have to go out to Sandy's to purchase another round of seeds just to plant them back down again on the island farm. All before returning home to shove them into my hundreds of kegs. I think I'm having deja vu. But hey, would you look at that, it's day 430. And would you believe it, it's a day for presents worth Poxiel, with Sebastian's birthday sprinkled in there for a bit of fun. There was a lot of gift giving today, but it wasn't all about the gifts. That night I put the infuser back to work and conjured up an inventory full of different types of schnapps, all of which I shipped off towards the shipping collection. I had a couple of cooking recipes to cook up the next morning, including a mango sticky rice and a pumpkin darling slice. Hey wait a minute, that rhymed. 
I worked on another section of the Summit Farm for a while today. I ended up turning the section up the stairs into a bee house area. Of course I had to add extra decorations around the place before spreading the grass around, but it turned out quite nice. With some time still left in the day, I wandered down to the pier to do some fishing. Also, I could catch myself a squid. It was the last item left to give out from my journal of quests, and after handing it to Willy, my journal was now empty. Can you tell I'm starting to try and fill time yet? No? Okay, great. Then let's scooch right over to day 432. It started off with handing Gunther a birthday gift before heading off to Ridgeside. I came across Arya while I was looking for Zane. She asked me to accompany her around the village meeting everyone as she wanted to give herself a break. And I have never been more happy to say yes given all the pressure she's had on her shoulders. I was in the village to hand out a few more presents to people I had missed during the week, or to people who had walked through the void apparently. With the morning now gone, I decided to spend the rest of the day working away in the jade stone diamond shed. I wasn't going to be able to fill the whole shed with crystallariums, so I split the room in half, one half being the crystallariums and the other decorated in the theme of a workshop. I stayed up quite late to finish it, but I was pretty stoked with the final result. Maintaining that decorator hat on day 433 meant that I couldn't help but finish weaving the path through the extended orchard, since all of my trees had grown up so fast. And with some final touches here and there, it was the perfect space filler. And actually, I didn't find anything else to do for the rest of the day, so... Here we go! I apologise for the no warning montage but I didn't want to say gift giving again and I thought it would be more fun that way. What's funny is I didn't do too much for the rest of the day today, however I went to the hungry bear on the off chance that I just happened to figure it out. And I did. Very easily might I add, I wish I had recorded my mic because there was a lot of yelling and swearing at myself. I will admit finishing that was like scratching an itch that you can't reach, so I was feeling good on day 437. I was riding around Ridgeside that morning and happened to pop into the odd job shop where I noticed another summit farm upgrade. It turns out Sean is so good at his job, he can build houses and manipulate whole climates so I can grow crops all year round. Despite that, this opens a whole new realm of possibilities for the garden, so I got right to it. Back on the farm I got to making all the different types of seeds I would need, but it turns out I was short 5 grapes to make more summer seeds. However, thanks to Pierre's stock list and a little space on Ginger Island, I can grow a small patch of grapes in the corner. All I need is a little patience. And we all know I'm a very patient person. In the meantime, I paid a visit to Sandy's to stock up on starfruit seeds. I overheard a lovely conversation happening between Bert and Olga. I finally checked out the Ridgeside Community Center greenhouse I unlocked at the end of the last video, and I had a nice conversation with June overlooking the valley, all before sleepy times. Starfruit consumed a lot of day 438. There was starfruit harvesting, starfruit planting, very satisfying by the way, and starfruit fermenting. Then, to pass the rest of the day, I gave Zane a gift, putting him at Max Hearts, emptied the Jade Stone Diamond Shed, and called it a night. It's as plain and simple as that. I was off to Ginger Island the morning of day 439. Okay, no, uh, Pox, that's, that's Ridge Tide. Yeah, okay. Well, let me try this again. I was off to Ginger Island the morning of day 439. Mm, not quite, that's the desert. Okay, well, you got this, third time's a charm. I was off to Ginger Island the morning of day 439. Today's mission took place in the Volcano Dungeon, because I want a tiger slime egg to fill my slime hutch. I didn't get any though, so that was a fun use of my time.
Day 444 is a special day because it's the final episode of Season 3 of your favourite segment of all time, Panning with Poxio! You know how this works by now, and this is a special one today because it is the one and final episode of Season 3. And you bet we went out with a bang, because we panned up lucky ring number 18, and then lucky ring number 19. Then we added two more onto that which made it number 20, and then number 21. And then let's pan out one more for good luck, because why not? A total of 5 rings were panned up today, bringing our final tally to 22 lucky rings. What a way to close out Season 3 of everyone's most beloved segment on YouTube. Moving right along to day 441, I decided to hit you all with a throwback today and spent the day selling some of my starfruit wine at the market day. I even went above and beyond and bought some sick shades to help sell my wine. Because who would say no to that stylish look instead? It was a successful market day and after dumping the rest of the wine into the shipping bin, I woke up on day 442 with a healthier looking bank account. Fun's over though because it's back to gift giving again today. I won't montage it, I promise. But I did run into Kimpoi at Bert and August and I got a peek at an old photo of some of the villagers from back in the good old days. However, being community day, it made the present giving a little more forgiving as everyone was hanging out in the community center. The same cannot be said about the next day though. Although Mr. Agua finally took charge over the potential sinkhole mentioned in the last 100 days, he used a poisonous concoction to disintegrate the growth underneath the village. Paired with a bit of magic and it was good as gone. I got to choose what was planted here in replacement of the growth, so I chose Ridgeside Fruits. I'm a humble guy, but saving the village from a potential sinkhole and giving gifts to the populace of the valley like some incessant Santa Claus must be sending my brownie points through the roof, right? To finish up the day, I accepted Danger in the Deep from Key and found the third and final waterfall for a quest I had picked up from Geo's hut and I saw all of the great weapons available. Now one weapon really caught my eye, so I picked up some spiritual essence from back on the farm and returned to purchase the green gambler dagger. It does between 1 and 500 damage, so I guess it really is a gamble. And after a bit of experimentation on the ridge mountain slaying some monsters, I'll admit it was a lot of fun. The next day, day 444, started with some great picking on Ginger Island, and I think you know what that means. And while Sean goes to manipulate the weather conditions on top of a mountain, I decided to take the tractor on a joyride and did some donuts on the farm for a while. Alright, well, okay, that's enough of that. I did get to collect a second round of starfruit wine though, so I guess that's something. But I think it would be best to jump to day 445. It was the feast of the winter star today, and I thought, I've been giving out gifts to the villagers of the valley, I think I deserve a gift this year too. So as I entered the festivities in town, I dropped off a summer spangle to Caroline since she was my secret person this year. Elliot then surprised me with the gift of all gifts, the tea set. Ooh. Well now, how about that? Elliot, my friend, you are going at the top of the list for best present. Although I found Bingus up way past her bedtime staring at a wall. It's a little concerning I'll admit, but my tea set looks great on the coffee table. I began day 446 atop the volcano on Ginger Island, simply because I wanted to infuse 3 rubies into my green gambler's dagger to up its damage output. So instead of 1 to 500 damage, it now does 4 to 650. And to celebrate, I took it downstairs and through the volcano dungeon. I will say it's still fun to use and it puts in a lot of effort. Unfortunately, it doesn't guarantee tiger slime eggs though and I found that out the hard way today. Never to mind, day 447 is a new day, and it began up in the village of Ridgeside, handing Irene a Ridge Wild Apple for her birthday. Across the gem sea, an ocean of starfruit was ready for harvest, so I took to gathering them all. I raced them home so I could dump them all into my kegs for another week of fermentation. But in mockery of all that is good in this world, Sandy wasn't attending her shop today. <laughs> I didn't quite know what to do with myself since I had no starfruit to plant. So to pass the time I patched up the animal area with more grass, bought more coffee from Gus to turn into triple shot espressos back home for personal use, and sat for a while with Dusty wondering what I did wrong to deserve this. 
Dealing with star fruit seems to be a common theme for the 28th of each month, but I can't forget about giving Shiro's birthday present to him. Taking care of that had taken up most of the final day of winter, so I took some time to myself atop Dusty in my usual contemplating spot in the ridge. You know, next to this huge health and safety risk. I did go to the Ember of Resolutions festival that night, but I think I'd like to end winter here because it's just such a beautiful spot. And I can't believe we're already back into sp- Day 449 is the start of our fifth year in the valley, which is just insanity. First order of business, as usual, is the crop fields, but I have a tractor for that now. Right afterwards, I helped Geo buy groceries. That's not a lie, by the way, he asked me to buy groceries from Piers. So I did, and I got him some wine and melons. Who knows what they're for? Either way, that didn't hold off the fact that I was back to prisons with Poxiel today. I had a pretty good system going though, and I was slowly ticking more people off of the list, so I can't complain. Same goes for day 450. You'd think the halfway point would be a bit more celebratory, but I was locked in and grinding away. Thankfully, it didn't take up my whole day. I still had time to drive down the coast and spend a bit of time with Sophia and Scarlett atop the lighthouse, overlooking a sea of mangroves. I also had time to do a few things back on the farm, like empty the diamond shed, cook a delicious strawberry lover pie, and spend some quality time with Dusty. As if we don't do that a lot already anyway. I took advantage of that climate control upgrade I got for the summit farm on day 451. Since all crops can now grow at all points of the year, I went around planting little patches of crops around the empty sections. As well as crops, I planted some flowers too, just to mix it up a bit. And well, I think that was a day well spent. Heading to the sewers the morning of day 452, I crashed a party full of void monsters. A bit of a lame party if you ask me though. Turns out they weren't here for a party, but a peace treaty between humans and the void creatures. To make said treaty a reality, I would have to bring them 60 void souls. How many souls did I have currently? I don't want to say. So with nothing better to do, I headed out to the Crimson Badlands to gather some more. I actually managed to pick quite a few Void Souls, and my Green Gambler's Dagger was putting in some hefty work. However, by the afternoon the Void Souls left to collect had run dry, so I just headed back home, and decided to call it an early night. I was back on the summit farm on day 453. The decorator bug had bitten once again and I just couldn't resist the temptation. I worked on the top section today, adding a bigger main path leading to the views, popping down a few extra plants and braziers around the crops, and adding a bunch of grass. I didn't stop there though, I'm quite proud that I had this idea and I'm so happy with how it turned out, but with a small path, some quick math, and more decorative plants, I made this really cool pathway that cuts off the garden from the edge of the farm. And as they say, not too shabby. Not too shabby. Day 454 began in the keg sheds collecting another round of starfruit wine. I've heard it's good to start your day with a win, so a win worth 1.8 million gold sounds pretty good to me. After dumping the wine into the shipping bin, I popped back out to the Crimson Badlands to gather a few more souls for Krobus' friends, before returning to the volcano dungeon for a slim chance of a tiger slime egg. No, I didn't get one. The only egg I found was the one staring back at me in the mirror that night. So I guess it's on to day 455. I tried to make a start giving out gifts this morning. However, I once again watched a villager walk into the void. Oh my god. And I got distracted making dusty moonwalk slide around the place in the town square. <laughs> but I did tick a couple more villagers off of the gift giving list. I was down to the final few villagers left on my present list, and on day 456, I only had to hand out presents to Apples, Kiwi, Andrea, and Alex. The others had birthdays coming up, so I wasn't too worried about them. Furthermore, I gave Olivia a pearl for a help wanted quest. Pretty straightforward, right? Andy, for a help wanted quest, asked for an ornate treasure chest. The only place I could think to find one of them was the Highlands, so that's where I went. With Dusty, we rode through the Highlands, up the mountain once more, and were on the hunt for the dino on top. We found it, so I took to what I thought would be an easy fight. However, I got a little too close, and maybe a little too cocky, and well... 
Not only that, but I lost my dagger in the midst of it all. So Andy did receive his ornate treasure chest, but at what cost? It was tough to pick myself out of bed the next day, but I had to because I had Anton's birthday sleep in to interrupt. Uh, I mean, celebrate. And I did so with a red Jezorian flower. I couldn't miss out on my star fruit either, and I guess the thought of all that gold perked me up a little bit. And after planting down seeds for another harvest and dumping the star fruit into my kegs, I wrapped it up for the day. I gave Andy a mixed berry pie the morning of day 458. I figured the help wanted quests would aid in my quest in becoming the most popular farmer. I'm surprised it hadn't slipped my mind, but I headed out for the third time to the Badlands to collect a few more void souls. In all honesty, I thought 60 would be a breeze, but they're not as common as I thought they were. After that small adventure, I apparently needed quite the rest and returned to the usual spot above the valley for a while. It was Isabel's turn for a birthday celebration the morning of day 459, and I got to tick off another villager for having full hearts. Up at the summit farm I was pleased to see all of my orchard trees blooming, and now that they had grown it was time to decorate. Day 460 began back in the Badlands for the last time, I promise. My trips out here had given me just enough souls to meet the Void Monster's treaty conditions, so I handed them over to Krobus to give them the souls on my behalf. Then, for the rest of the day, I played around with the artisan machines with the wiki page up right beside me. I got to make fruit peels with the grinder, I messed around with the DNA synthesizer and made a whole bunch of different DNA with different animal products from around the farm. I tried to get frog DNA, but every time I tried it would run away from me. I also stumbled on a key on my keyboard that shows me the automate mod UI. Yes, I installed automate, but I seriously don't really know how it works. As you can see, these chests aren't linked up to the machines like they would be. So I don't know. I tried experimenting and doing it with paths like the mod says to do, but either way, it wasn't really working out. This curiosity for the automate mod continued on to day 461. I managed to get it to work on the bee houses and linked the lightning rods to a chest. So safe to say it works with the vanilla stardew machines and yes it is pretty fun using it in the jade stone shed. But that didn't alleviate the fact that it wouldn't work with the other ones. So I guess I'd have to keep doing it all manually. So I made some essential oils with the alembic a whole bunch of different butters in the butter churns, some canned fish with the canning machine, and later that night some dried chai tea leaves. Day 462 was also spent with the machines. It started off with the drying rack and using it to create a lot of new artisan goods to ship off for the shipping collection. Then I switched to the glass jar and made an unruly amount of kombucha using the vast amount of teas I had in the kitchen. And to wind it up was more goods made from the grinder before bedtime. After picking up Danger in the Deep from Key and giving Olivia a birthday gift, I had to give up on the machines on day 463 for some more gift giving. It was taken care of pretty quickly so I headed off to the mines for Key's quest. However, upon arrival I witnessed quite possibly the weirdest yet most interesting cutscene I've ever seen. I watched as the void souls I had given to the void creatures created new life for their people. Super weird but kind of wholesome. Aww. And as I descended down the mines with my staircases, I realized that the peace treaty was now in place. As I got to the lower levels, they actually wouldn't attack me. Although I just realized that it's a good thing I completed the monster slayer goals ages ago, otherwise that may have been bad, I might have softlocked myself. Presence with Poxiel has come to an end today. <laughs> and all I can say is, thank God for that. All my weekly villagers had reached max hearts, now all that was left were the last couple of birthdays left the spring season. I got to celebrate by gathering another round of starfruit wine and shipping it off for those sweet delicious profits. I wish I could say the rest of the day was more productive, but it was not. 
So it's today 465. It was my goal to tick off the Summit Farm garden from my to-do list today. I had one single section left to finish, and with the help of a few decorational plants and a stack of grass, it was finished. I took some time afterwards to add some final smaller details around the garden. It turned out way better than I could have even imagined. Day 466 is Naomi's birthday, meaning our old mate Andy was the last one left, and his birthday was coming up soon. I had all the time to fill before then however, so today I dealt with another starfruit harvest. There was an adventure to be had on day 467. Gunther asked me to accompany him down to the mines to look for untouched artifacts, so I agreed. We came across some in a nearby cave. I sliced a slime, and Gunther got what he wanted. Speaking of slicing slime, the adventure continued over to the volcano dungeon where I searched once again for a tiger slime egg. And I managed to find not one, but two at the same time. I'm sorry little ones, but your time here is now up. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Now I get to have a hutch full of tiger slimes, and I put down a wicked statue so we wouldn't have a repeat situation. The following day was reserved solely to explore the Highland Caves, and to see what it was like to not have a million void monsters chasing you. Turns out their treaty turned them invincible, so let's cross our fingers they don't reverse said treaty and stay invincible. Funny number day plus 400 started out back in the slime hutch. I set up the chest next to the row of slime egg presses so they'd be automated, and then realised it had kind of already happened with the default slime incubator. Oh well, I'm sure that slime's life will last a very long time. As for the rest of the day, I made ice cream. There should totally be an ice cream truck mod, that would be amazing. Anyway, moving on to day 470, the animals had mowed right through their pasture, so I filled that back to the broom with grass, before really struggling to find something to do. Later that afternoon though, I remembered Key would have some fresh quests for me, and luckily he was offering up the Hungry Skull Caverns quest. With staircases in hand, I knocked out that quest in no time at all, only getting slightly distracted wondering why I couldn't drink my espresso. My stupidity really does astound me sometimes. But we can't dwell on that for too long because it's day 471. Because it's Andy's birthday and there's no time to muck around. I handed Andy a single farmer's lunch and with that, there was peace. Peace that I will never, ever have to give another villager a present again. We can finally tick another goal off towards perfection. I then proceeded to waste away the day searching the valley's vendors for more cooking recipes, since I had a few left to cook and no idea where they were. I am sad to say I came up short, except I got my gambler's dagger back so maybe I spoke too soon. I ended up in the spirit realm that night. How did I even get here? Day 472 I took a break from the crazy fast paced life of a farmer to spend the day boogieing with my wife Blair at the flower dance. Aww. But it was back to reality the following day, and it began back in the keg sheds collecting up another round of wine. I'm hoping it'll be one of the last, because we're getting pretty close to 10 million. I then wandered over to Ginger Island, unfortunately not to pan for more lucky rings, but to relocate them back to the farm. Two historical moments now etched into the farm's history. Genuinely, I spent all of day 474 up in the Ridge Mountains slaying monsters for spiritual essence. You'll see why in a minute, I promise, but I was happy to put the gambler's dagger back to work. I missed my beautiful little dagger. No, I didn't get enough essence, thank you for asking, but a particular field of starfruit was in need of harvesting on day 475. So after gathering many starfruit, planting many starfruit, and fermenting many starfruit, I found myself back in the Ridge Mountains, collecting the last spiritual essence I needed. But before that, here is Tort in his final form. That's right, my final day of spring began in Tort's small shack, which actually took me to meet Tort's real form. This tortoise, which I once thought was a cute little guy, turns out to be some sort of universal being. Buying the cult clothes with the spiritual essence doesn't seem as cool now. Like a ninja in the night, with Detective Dusty, I pledge to protect the valley from all evil spirits and horrible monsters that threaten our very way of life. In Ninja Poxiel and Detective Dusty, coming summer 2024. I'd totally watch that. <laughs> 
Oh yeah, um, sorry. Where, where were we? Oh yeah, that's right. The final change of the season is here. Day 477 marks the first day of summer, and you know what that means now, right? With a fresh field of blueberries growing, I tried to see if the tractor would do more than crops. Like chopping down trees? Well, I am quite disappointed. I then made some more schnapps that evening, and made a start making some new funky types of mayonnaise that night. I didn't stop there though, day 478 saw me making more artisan goods because there's just so damn many of them. Day 479 I reserved for the Skull Caverns. I didn't need anything down here, but I thought it'd be a fun way to spend the day. And I was right, it was pretty fun. I had gathered so much yesterday that I wanted to smelt it all, but I also wanted to put the automate mod to work. So I shimmied a chest between the rows of furnaces, and all I had to do was leave it, put everything in it, and let it do its thing. But all of this extra time is just a burden, so I shipped off lots of animal products that had built up over time, trust me, there was a lot, and just passed the time hanging out at the summit farm. It was back to the Volcano Caldera the morning of day 481, this time to enchant my tools and take whatever I can get. My fishing rod was the only tool to get something exciting, and that was the auto catch enchant. So I took it down to the pier to give it a whirl, and I mean hey, that's pretty cool. Then I just sat around and waited for my wine to be ready. Yeah, the things to do are getting pretty stretched right now, but I did get to ship it all away that night. Which was exciting because on the morning of day 482, I had 10 million gold in my pocket. Which meant it was finally time for the Deep Woods Obelisk. So I raced over to the wizards, saw the stuff I needed, got back home, and realized that I didn't have quite enough sap. There's a few places to chop trees, but I thought it would be more symbolic of the series ending to remove the oak resin farm that I had made in the desert. And my axe has the swift enchant which makes this quite satisfying. I returned to the valley soon afterwards to chop more trees in the cinder sap forest. And yes I got sidetracked watching apples and his friend peaches having a dance, so cute. Aww. I finally had enough materials to get the obelisk and even though I couldn't quite fit it into the obelisk area, I found a spot for it nearby. Now, you'd imagine this is where you would see me running around the deep woods, but for the first time in my YouTube career, I forgot to press record for two whole days. Talk about unprofessionalism, eh? But that's okay, I promise you, you didn't miss out on much because it's pretty much just the same thing over and over again like you're seeing here on day 485. The obelisk allows you to save your level every 10 levels, so I was starting from level 60 today. Something I figured out over the time I've been here is you can bomb the poisonous plants away, so that's a little fun fact for you. I'll tell you one other thing, these putrid ghosts do not care how much health you have either, they hit like a truck. But that didn't discourage me in the slightest, I would be back the next day still making my way through the endless maze that is the deep woods. I'd come across a monster section and for no reason at all just die, but I'd pick myself right back up and carry on. Die it again? Don't worry I'm right back again the next morning. I even found a hidden away house and got very excited, but I couldn't even interact with it. For being 116 levels into this I'd expect a little something to be worth my troubles. Well I died again, and just between you and me, I kinda gave up on the deep woods after that. But my day was made on day 488. I was riding through the west woods to go and check on apples, and was thrilled to see all of his Junimo friends and the bear hanging out with him today. We all got to witness the mother star fruit tree with everyone, and safe to say Apples was loving it. I went fishing on day 489, maybe it was because I needed something to do, or maybe it was for old time's sake, but either way, it was quite relaxing. Apples came to ask me a very serious question on day 490. He asked me if I wanted to see Aurora Vineyard restored, or if I wanted apples and peaches to stay there. And honestly, we don't have much time left in the Mega Modded Valley, so I just let him stay so he can enjoy his home with his friends. Today was spent overlooking the Junimo's workout in the crop fields. After last fall's shenanigans, I gotta make sure their work is up to standard. I bumped into a conversation between Magnus and Mr. Aguar on day 491. It turns out they found another valley threatening anomaly, but to be honest this one they're gonna have to work out on their own. 
I also moved the woods obelisk back a couple of tiles so I could put some paths down to it. It looked a little silly being right beside the main path. For the next few days I, I just kind of slept the days away because truthfully I had run out of things to do. Which certainly isn't a bad thing, it means we've pretty much done everything we possibly can. But it was a somber reminder that we were close to the end. Days 497 and 498 were days I just played for myself, riding dusty around the places I knew I wouldn't be visiting for a while, if not ever again. Day 499, as per usual, <laughs> I did absolutely nothing all day long. And here we are. I, l I cannot fathom it on day 500. As is tradition, in all of my 100 days videos, I spend the final day in the spa, soaking in the water and reflecting on the last 100 days. And well, I guess we have a whole series to reflect on. I am beyond stoked about how this series turned out, to think we started with a rundown farmhouse and a field full of debris, to the wonderful adventure that we have turned this into. I had no idea where this series was going at the start, but to think we made it this far is such a crazy thought. I couldn't have asked for a better ending. But I'm going to finish the series here on the summer, because you may be thinking, hey Boggs, hello, you didn't get perfection, what's the deal? After much research, suffering, and finally acceptance, to my knowledge, perfection isn't actually achievable. I have dabbled and tried to think of solutions, but some things just either aren't in the game because mods haven't been updated or you need a coding degree to actually get something to work, and I just don't think it's worth the pain. Instead, I just looked at what we did achieve. We spent 500 days here in this valley. We managed to reach 96% towards perfection. We've spent 136 real life hours to get to where we are and made a total of 45.3 million gold. So sure, we may not have hit that 100%, but the hours spent, the adventures chased, the goals achieved, and seeing all of you watching this along with me. Well that my friends, sounds like perfection to me. So that's it, that is a series wrap on the mega modded videos. I'll let you have a look at the final look of the farm, I'm so happy with how all of this turned out. I'll even give you a look at the summer farm, because as a screenshot you can see it all in one picture, and that too I am very happy with. If you have made it this far then all I can say is thank you so much for following this journey with me. Leaving a like on the video and subscribing to the channel is always much appreciated, and I guess we just move on to the next adventure now, which I am very, very excited for. All that's left to say is, you're all wonderful people, so have a wonderful day, and thank you so much for watching. <laughs>